Hi, this is Dana for Split Coast Stampers. This tutorial is all about watercolor powders. These are a powdered or crystalline paint product that can be used for a wide variety of basic techniques that I'll show you here. They can be mixed with water to do watercolor techniques, and they can also be mixed with other paints and mediums to make your own custom colors. In the video, I'll mainly be using products called Brusho and Color Burst. These are both very similar dye-based products that are a lot of fun to work with. There are a few other products that do work in the same way, and those are pictured here. And I'll have more information on those in the Split Coast forums if you're interested. Here, I just want to focus on showing you how they work. I'm going to begin with a basic technique, just sprinkling some of this powder onto a piece of watercolor paper. And this can be done with just a little shake or a gentle squeeze of the bottle. Now, since these products are powdered, this is kind of their superpower, this sort of firework display that's done with just a mist of water. I usually start misting from a distance so that I can see where the color is and where it's going to go. Now, the more water you add, the more blended and spread the color will be. So you'll want to experiment with distance and amount of water to see what works for you. You can also switch the steps up and add the water first. Here I'm just misting with a regular spray bottle, but you can also stamp with water or brush water into a specific area to catch the powder if you want to do it that way. Once you've added the color to your panel, you can add more water or more powder until you get the look that you want. Just don't be afraid to play. Jump in there and experiment. That's the only way you're going to get to know the product that you have. If your panel is curling on you, turn it over and give it a quick mist of water on the back side to help it flatten out. If you do decide to mix colors, be sure that you're using colors that play well together and start with light colors first before you add dark ones in. If you want the colors to layer on top of each other instead of blending together, let the panel dry between layers. And you can do that with a heat tool, but just be aware that it will mix and move your colors around a little bit. So it's best to let it air dry. Once you have a colored panel, another technique that you can use is for lifting color from your painted area. You can do this with water, either misted directly or through a stencil like I've done, or with a brush if you want more detail. And just apply the water and then use a paper towel roll to lift the color off. You can blot the color with a rag or paper towel too, but the roll allows you to go over the panel without accidentally disturbing other areas. If you want a sharper contrast, you can use bleach to brush away color. This water brush is filled with liquid bleach and that won't harm the brush. If you do use a regular paintbrush, be sure it has synthetic or nylon bristles because bleach will actually eat away the natural brush bristles and I don't want you to ruin your brushes. This panel had been sitting for a while, so the contrast that I got here isn't very high. If your panel is freshly colored and dried though, you can almost completely remove the color with bleach. And the results will also vary depending on what color you're going over and how concentrated the color is there. Instead of putting the powder directly onto paper, you can create prints by activating the powder on a non-porous surface like I'm doing here on this craft sheet. I've sprinkled out two different colors of brush -o, and I'm misting them with a little water and I just mist until the color starts to beat up. And then you can lay tags or watercolor paper right into the paint. You can usually get several prints out of one puddle of color and each one will be unique. You can add more color into the puddle. You can spray more water. Also, while you have a puddle of color there, you can dye rayon seam binding to match the color of your tags. You can use the dyed seam binding on paper or altered projects, but just so you know, the dyes are not permanent, so don't use the seam binding on a project that's going to be washed. You can also use a stamp to pick up color and press it onto your panel. Now, because this is really wet, you won't get a really crisp image this way, but it's a great way to add texture to your project. If you're adding wet color onto a dry panel, you can either let it dry like I did here or blot it with a paper towel to remove the color like I did with the stencil before. You can do a similar technique with a stamp by actually lifting wet color from one area of your colored panel and stamping it into another area. Again, this adds some interesting texture to your background that also blends into the colors that you've already laid down. If 
For the next technique, I'm going to begin with a botanical image that I've heat embossed on watercolor paper with white powder. I'm sprinkling watercolor powder onto the image using three different colors. And when I activate the powder with water, the embossed image is going to resist the water and really add some drama to my panel. While the color is still wet, I'm going to use this stamping technique that I just showed you and use that same stamp that I embossed to add some more leaves to the background in the same colors that are already on the card. Here's another fun and simple resist technique. I've embossed a piece of watercolor paper using an embossing folder and I'm using a white Crayola crayon to rub over all the raised areas until they have a little waxy buildup overall. You could use a white oil pastel to do this technique as well. After that's done, I'll sprinkle some powders onto the panel and mist with water. And the raised areas will resist the color and all the activated paint powders will sink down into the areas that aren't embossed and create some beautiful trapped blends of color. The next technique is a stenciling technique and I love that this one is a little bit messy on purpose. I'm sprinkling powder through the openings of the stencil but I want to be sure to get some on the stencil itself as well. When I mist the stencil with water all the powders inside and outside of the openings will activate and once that's all wet I can flip the stencil over to get a print from those colors as well. If you're not familiar with stencil mono printing, we have a great tutorial on the Split Coast site. When you make your mono print, be careful not to squish color out into the openings of the stencil. Just gently press the stencil and let the color soak into your paper. I have a paint palette where I've mixed some custom colors together and also just given myself some samples of each color of color burst that I have. This is very easy to do. You just squeeze or shake some powder into the palette and mix in a few drops of water. Mix it together with your brush and you have a very transparent paint for watercoloring. And you can use that just like you would use any other ink or watercolor medium. You can vary the amount of powder and of water depending on how much paint you need and how concentrated you want the paint to be. The higher the ratio of water to product, the lighter the color will be. If you don't use up all your paint in one sitting, you can go ahead and let the paint dry in the palette. It will revive with water at a later time and you can paint with it just as you did the first time that you mixed it. If you need more paint to create a wash of color or you want a lighter color than the one you've already mixed, you can add more water to the mixture. You can even mix colors together to create your own custom colors and shades. Here I've made a lighter wash of red from the same color I used before. I'm adding a little bit of purple and I'll end up with a shade of burgundy. That can blend right into my first wash of red. In addition to watercolor paints, you can use these products to create your own spray mists. I bought some empty spray bottles on eBay and I filled them about one third full with water. And then I add powder until I have the shade that I want. I usually make small amounts so I don't use a lot of powder up at one time. But you could make as much or as little as you want. If you want some shimmer in your spray, you can add a pearlescent or a metallic medium to your mix. I have this one from Sargent Art, or you could use Perfect Pearls or a watercolor mixative. Just shake it up to mix it all together, and you have a custom colored spray mist that you can use on paper or wood or another porous surface. If you use a mixative, you'll need to shake it before you use it again, but the powders will dissolve completely in the water. If you wanted to create a custom color of a clear glaze like glossy accents, or an acrylic medium like gel medium or modeling paste, you can do that with these powders too. Just mix the powder in until it dissolves and use it as you normally would on your mixed media project. You can even shade acrylic paint with a sprinkle of powder too. 
As you can see, there are so many ways that these products can be used, and I've just given you a start here. It takes such a little bit of product to try a new technique, so be brave and play and see what you can come up with. And if you do come up with something new, please share so that we can learn together. I hope that I've given you some ideas for products that you already have or an interest in trying something new. Be sure to visit our gallery for more samples, and I thank you so much for watching.